So we're about to pull up at a project today. Uh, it's in Delray Beach, Florida. We're replacing an uh, old panel that is dangerous. This is in uh, a section of De uh, Delray that is one of the original large condominium uh, developments that was put in. And it, uh, I believe they started in the mid 70s and building this here, which that's back at that time, this was all just swamp essentially. They brought in the fill and, 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 and built this pretty decent sized uh, development. And, I, and they're still building here uh, new, new units. So they've been building for the last, what, almost 50 years here. So, but you, it's interesting because you see the progression through time of you know, the earliest units, which we're, we're working today on one, I believe it was built around, if I looked at the, on the permits, it was around uh, 1976, I think. I, don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was 76 and that was right at the beginning and and that obviously there's a zinsco panel there so that makes sense and then there's other units that we've worked on in here and, and you know they're like fpe and stuff like that and then you see the the slim ge's you know as you get into the 90s um so there it's it's a kind of like a timeline you know and, and that's always cool to see but uh stay tuned and you'll uh get a first-hand view of the installation as we do it and if you have any questions or concerns go ahead and put them down in the comment section um, i always like to hear from either electricians or homeowners that you know are, are looking for this type of work or an electrician that sees something that i do you know or any pointers that where you can see that i can improve my uh my customer service or installation so um feel free to drop down there and, and uh or give us a like if you enjoy the video So I just wanted to take the time to kind of go over the differences between the two panels. Um, you know, I feel like that's something that would hold a lot of value to potential per buyers all over the country that need to have a panel removed and replaced. So this is a General Electric panel. Um, it has the same capacity as the panel that we're removing. Uh, and it has plenty of space. Um, the footprint isn't too big in comparison, which a lot of other manufacturers um, for, for this, uh, uh, this amount of breaker space, they're going to have a, a larger footprint in the wall. And when you have a condo situation like we're in, there's not a lot of space. You'll see where the installation is occurring is between a, a closet door and a, uh, another perpendicular wall in the master bedroom. So space is at a premium. However, we're still able to accomplish the goal with this particular, uh, panel choice. And then the other aspect is, uh, you know, GE, we stand by General Electric and, and, and feel comfortable doing so because they've had such a good track record over the years. Now, this is what we're removing. It's, it's an old uh, Zinsco, um, and it's definitely seen better days. It's got probably more coats of paint than, I don't even know what to compare that to, but it's definitely, uh, you know, uh, got a lot of wear and tear on it. Um, this is the, what the... Zinsco panels look like. This is what we just pulled out a couple minutes ago. Um, there are some good features to the old Zinscos. They have the ability to move the whole um, bus bar system forward and backwards on these two adjustment bolts. So that, that's interesting and, and you don't see that as much anymore. So if the drywaller ended up being a little bit off, this, that's what would help you to uh, close the gap between the panel cover and the screw and the, and the in the, the, the section of the, the breakers that's supposed to be exposed, but limiting the ability for, uh, like let's say a homeowner or uh, anybody to be able to reach their fingers in between the panel cover and, and get uh, you know, in contact with a live electrical wire. So that is a good feature that I like to see. Um, the, the overall construction of the box, the, the metal is considerably thicker. It's almost twice as thick as modern panels, um, but that's kind of where the, the benefits to an old Zinsco end. Um, and, and the problems begin, which uh, namely the breakers fail to trip at the correct voltage, or I'm um, sorry, the correct amperage. Um, and so there's two different ways that breakers trip. They, they, they have an overcurrent trip and then they have a thermal trip, so a thermal overload, which would be like a loose connection, even though the amperage is not exceeding, let's say it's a 20 amp breaker, we're only at 15 or 20 amps going out. 
the thermal um, overload is when something gets too hot. So both of those different ways that a modern breaker would trip, which is the same design for this um, antiquated system, they both fail. And I believe it's on the 30s more frequently, but also on any breaker size. Um, so that's the, the reason that they were recalled and the reason that they're considered um, uninsurable by, uh, you know, 99% of homeowners insurance providers and we can we say that they're illegal. They're not technically illegal, I don't think. I don't think there's a statute that prevents them from being in your home, but as far as code goes, they're a violation. Uh, we couldn't, we cannot utilize um, this breaker. They do make retrofits that are very expensive and those are UL listed and code compliant and they have corrected the, um, the issue, but at the end of the day, it's better to just go with a new panel that's gonna, something that, you know, an electrician like myself can stand by and make sure that for many years to come, you're gonna have drama-free, you know, ability to just uh, not worry about your electrical system and, and know that you're safe and if something else goes wrong anywhere else in the home, that the, the, the safety precautions that are put in place, namely the, the new panel, are gonna eliminate that problem before it becomes something more dramatic or dangerous so that that's the reason for this uh, removal and replacement um, peace of mind safety and overall reliability are going to in increase dramatically with this new type of panel so uh, if you want to step upstairs with me and take a peek at the exact location where it's being installed and we can go over the rest of the, the job for you ago I had a problem with my electric panel and I really didn't know how to, who to turn to and this was a problem I had uh, about 7 7 30 at night so I went online and I found Simon Electric and they say that they're open 24 hours so I gave a call and I got a hold of the owner Raphael who worked me through the problem he got me going so he saved me a, a service charge so I really did not look you know, get any other quotes. I got a new, you know, I'm actually, I'm having a new electric panel put in. And I just looked online and I actually, um, Simon Electric is Google recommended. And looking at everybody's reviews online, they just gave outstanding reviews from the owner, Raphael, to for the people that are here now. Uh, so, you know, I would highly recommend Simon Electric. They're very, um, they're, they're very reputable and uh, I expect them to do a good job today. So I would highly recommend Simon Electric. So there's a prime example here that we noticed um, for the, the reason for why we replaced the Zinsco panels and that's overheating. Like, like I had mentioned, the thermal, uh, there's two ways of breaker trips. It's gonna uh, uh, overcurrent or thermal overload. And thermal overload is when a wire gets too hot, the breaker senses that, kicks it off. If you look here, this wire is uh, discolored and, and burnt here um, so it's an aluminum conductor um, it's missing the no locks and see none of the connections had no locks on them so that will also cr uh, create a metallurgic condition and the differences in, in uh, metals will create essentially almost like electrolysis and it will degrade the ability for the metal to maintain pliability and its ability to transmit electrons so essentially at the end of the day it makes it like kind of a little more brittle the sheathing and it and it, did, and it overheated this circuit here so i mean it, it seems like it's fine when we get further back um you know i, I will double check that but it we just wanted to call attention to this this is the type of an issue that is insco panel will will create and uh left on uh you know unabated this would end up becoming a more dangerous situation so um just a, something I, I figured uh, would be a good example of why we do, we're doing this type of a replacement. So 
so Antoine uh, is definitely, you know, could be considered in many circles to be a drywall surgeon or, you know, he's good at getting these panels in with this very limited uh, space. The old Zinscos, they were very condensed uh, for the number of circuits that were in the panel. So the, the original electrician had installed a stud here um, because they only needed 12 inches width. So they, they put a stud all the way from the top to the bottom. And I'm sure that was added by the electrician. Um, this has a normal 16 on center studs that are to the side of this closet here and at the corner. And that's what modern panels are all, or 90% of load centers are designed to fit between the 16 on center panel uh, spacing between um, studs. So this stud was in our way. Uh, Antoine did an amazing job of, you know, dismantling this wall in a way that he's going to be able to get the new panel in to fit with the minimal drywall damage. The old panel was bigger, so that is not something we, it was taller, in other words. So that's not something we could, you know, get around. But, you know, the width wise, he was able to cut a stud without any major drywall damage. And, and that's going to limit the repairs that are needed after we leave by a skilled drywall guy. So um, that's just something I wanted to point out. Uh, he was able to remove this chunk of stud so we can fit our new uh, panel in and, and, and it's going to come out real nice. Right about there. Let me see that mother side. This is, this is called reaming and what it does is it makes sure there's no sharp surface inside the pipe. It's going to nick the wires. This is EMT conduit, electrometallic tubing. And uh, usually condos like this are going to be um, EMT conduit throughout. Um, but if you look here, this one has Romex as well. And the Romex, um, the difference between a, you know, a, a dwelling or a commercial establishment that has Romex and electrometallic tubing throughout the property is the fire rating. So the fire rating dictates whether or not EMT is required or MC cable. Um, and what the fire rating usually is determined by is how many people are likely to gather in that facility and within a 24 hour period. So, um, this does have some EMT conduit in it, but usually the rest of the home, I'm sorry, is, is Romex. But normally in a condo like this, we would see more EMT. So we're just making a little offset to line up with our new panel knockout to make it a little, little cleaner of a finished product. So a little bit of finagling, a little bit of magic. And it'll be a much nicer finished product on, on, on the, where this comes into the box. And, and stuff like this, the inspector sees this type of stuff and, and, you know, and it makes all the difference in the world, you know. Just a little bit of extra care and, you know, he'll clearly see that this was done. And these are the types of things that make inspections go uneventful and uh, rewarding for both the inspector and the technician as far as how I see it, you know, I like when inspectors are pleased with what they see in it and it's a good feeling, so. And it's also real important to make sure you seat these screws very well so that they make good uh, connection with the, the conduit because this is actually, the conduit is the ground on this circuit. So that, uh, that's why it's called electrometallic tubing because it, it supplies the, the, uh, the ground is the outside. So it's actually almost like encapsulated by the wire that keeps everything safe inside, if that makes sense. Okay, now let's 
Okay. There's quite a few wires in this conduit. Another little thing to keep in mind is always try to turn your um, your, your set screws to the most convenient location for the next electrician. So if, you, if and when this needs to be taken apart, it can be easily, uh, easily done without like the screw being in a location where the electrician is not going to be able to access it. Like, see, I'm going to actually spin this one right now so it's not crammed up against the stud. If an electrician wants to add a circuit or something, he'll be able to easily do that. See this, the, so what we were doing here is this old uh, male adapter used to be right there and came into the panel right there where it's like nice and perpendicular to the side wall of the panel. But it's a pipe that's going down this wall so we can rotate it up like that and now it's going to be perpendicular again to the wall of the panel so it'll make a nice connection. And um, But it's in a lo uh, more uh, convenient location where it penetrates into the side of the new panel. So. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Another project, another completion, another satisfied customer, another day, another dollar, another panel replaced. So at the end of the day, this is something that is important to do. It's satisfying. You know, you get to see your work. You know, you come into an antiquated old system and you replace it and it's nice and shiny and new. And you know for a fact that for many years to come, that customer is going to be able to feel safe and rely upon that, uh, that new installation. So. Stay tuned to the next one. Until then, take care, guys. Have a nice day.